Sit back and relax and have fun listening to a couple of Survivor fans attempt to find any positives with Survivor Fiji. If you're looking forward to Survivor Fiji, then you've come to the right place as this episode of Survivor Retrospective is a deep dive looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly with Survivor Fiji. And we won't be doing an episode by episode recap of the season, and instead we'll be looking at the bigger picture to see where it truly ranks. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Russell Muscle TV here, back again with another video, and welcome back to another episode of Survivor Retrospective. Here we are on our 40 day long grind go to go from season 1 to season 40 in 40 days, building up to the premiere of season 41 of Survivor. We're all Survivor fans here, we're all super excited. If you're new to the channel, we're on season 14 now, which means we're 14 days into this, and season 14, we're going to be talking about Survivor Fiji. A little special, a little different to break up the usual grind of these videos. Today, I'm joined by another Survivor super fan, good friend of mine, Survivor Spencer. <laughs> How's it going, Survivor I mean, Spencer? It's 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 just great. I mean, it, I I love doing deep dive podcasts. It's, it's start, starting starting to become my favorite pastime, even though I literally just did one, you know, a few days ago. Um, it, it's just it's it's fun to sit down and talk about a season and not have to do a a video where you're just talking to yourself. It's it, it's fun to have somebody else who can geek out on the show with me. Yeah, the back and forth is really fun, and the good thing about this too is you get to see those different perspectives of the kind of thing. Like when you're doing every video yourself, day in, day out, you kind of get stuck in your own mindset. And even in the video that we had on David vs. Goliath, I had a few different ideas from bouncing off with you that I wouldn't yep, have got just yep. doing a video myself. So that was really fun. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think having two people, I think the, the, the best way to do a podcast is, isn't with one, it's not with three, it's not with four, it's with two people because you get two opinions, so it's easy to, easy to, 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 to digest. And this is kind of the argument. <laughs> kind of going off topic with the final two is that it's really easy to, to di digest when it's just rich and kelly you know what i mean it's just okay a and then it's b that's it but when when you have one there obviously it wouldn't work in survivor or if you have three there it's kind of hard it's, someone always gets blocked out and so yeah i i, I think we'll have fun do you want to get right into the season uh or are you good yeah yeah so we got a final three here this season so it's kind of good segue yeah. into that but so this idea for this podcast is I want to look at Survivor Fiji in a more like overarching macro scale kind of thing. In the David vs. Goliath yeah. video we had on Survivor Spencer's vi video, go check that out, link in the description. But anyways, in his video, we kind of went on an episode by episode analysis of the season. I don't want to do that for Survivor Fiji. You guys don't want to listen to that for Survivor Fiji. <laughs> We're going to be looking at it in a more macro, big ideas kind of thing. Looking at all the good, the little bit of good, there's not much. Looking at the good, looking at the bad, and looking at the ugly of the season to see really where the episode ranks. And so if you guys haven't seen any of my videos before, what I do is I talk about the season, and then at the very end, as a little good send-off and a good way to finish the episodes, I like to rank the season and put it into a tier list, and it kind of says thank you for you guys for watching the entire video. I'm not doing that this time. We're ranking the episode right now. We're ranking the season. I'm going to let you guys know right now, I rank this as the worst season of all time. I give it 1.0 wow. out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> One, Survivor Fiji is the worst season of all time. F tier, 1.0 out of 10. Give me your initial thoughts on the season. Overall, what do you oh, think? Well, I have a response to that. So you think it's it's worse than Thailand? Because again, I, for, for those of you that don't know, I've watched every season except Survivor Thailand. I Right now, I'm two episodes in. I'm two episodes in. I, I know all the big stuff. I know who wins the game. I know Clay is second. I know it's a four to three vote. I know there's some guy named Rob that goes out near the merge, if not right before, who's kind of an asshole, but then turns into kind of not an asshole. I know uh, that Jan is third. I know that Helen is fourth. And that, that's all I know about it. But I, from what I hear, it just sounds like a terrible viewing experience. And the first episode, if that's any indicator, Jesus Christ, that seems a train wreck. So I don't know. If, what, is, is there, is, you're saying Fiji's worse than Thailand, or, or does, Thai, is, does Thailand just get better as, as I go, or what? I don't know. Tell me. Thailand being an old school era season and being one of the first seasons, I think you have to give it a little more credit by that sense, mm -hmm. just because it's mm -hmm. starting things out. And there is some good strategy to be had. You have the Iceman, Mr. Freeze. Um... <laughs> <laughs> not not a good person, but good survivor player for the time. <laughs> Great survivor. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good survivor player, not a good person. But the problem, so I ranked, I have my rankings right here. My episode on Thailand's already out. I ranked Thailand 4.6 out of 10. I ranked Fiji really? as bottom tier. Yeah, I ranked Thailand, or I ranked wow. Fiji, sorry, 1.0. Do you have, uh, is, so wait, hold on. Is Th Thailand 39th or is it even higher than 39th? I have Thailand. I don't want to give a spoilers to all my rankings, but I have yeah. Fiji, then I have two seasons, and then I have Thailand. So I have Thailand wow. bottom four. Wow, you have, there are two seasons. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna guess. You don't have to say yes. I'm, I'm just gonna guess. That, that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. I think it's Worlds Apart and Redemption Island. 
That's my guess. Redemption <laughs> Island is uh, in my bottom 15. Oh, Worlds okay. Apart's really close. Oh, it's close, but it's not. Worlds the, Apart is the in the, my F tier. Worlds Apart's in the bottom. Yeah. So, guys, if you want to stay up to date with all these rankings before season 41, you should subscribe to the channel. Go see Survivor yeah. Spencer as well. But, yeah. I'm ranking every season, making a video on every season, not just doing a full tier list. So kind of deep dive analysis. Go check that out. Anyways, Survivor Fiji here today. It's the worst season of all time. But from a macro sense, I think that's just because of like when you think of what the season tries to do, it doesn't work like at all. And I kind of talked about this with Survivor Spencer on the David vs. Goliath video on that season could have kind of become a train wreck yep. if the Goliaths end up steamrolling the Davids and it becomes like the underdogs end up losing and it yep. becomes a bad thing there. I think that's what happens in Survivor Fiji. It's the haves versus the have-nots, obviously. And I, I guess like probably going into the season, they want, okay, let's get the underdogs coming up on top, showing that the good guy always wins. Well, no, that's not what happens here. The halves kind of destroy the entire pre-merge of the season. Eventually, you know, Earl ends up winning this the game, but it's not fun to watch the early parts, the haves versus the have-nots. And I hated watching that. It was hard to get through the first part of the season. What do you thought? What are your thoughts on the haves versus the have-nots? So my first bullet on, on the entire season is, because I only have uh, around like 13 or 14 bullets in the season. 14, yep. there we go. Perfect, perfect number. Um, So my, my first bullet is just have versus have-nots twist. It's like, I feel like what they were Why? trying to go for here is is um is a Palau because Palau had just aired a year prior to to to, to, to them uh, filming this, and I feel like they like saw how popular Palau was at the time, and even now it's pretty popular. It's like it's kind of obviously it's gone down because there's more seasons, but it's still pretty popular. And um I I think w they were trying to create an oolong out of Earl's tribe, which is like odd to me because that doesn't make any it has to be natural. It just has to be naturally a bad tribe. And Oolong, Oolong's uh, beach was better. Oolong had more stuff there. Oolong had stronger members. So you you can't create an Oolong. Oolong, an Oolong has to create itself, I feel like. Yeah, and that's a good point, too. And watching Savar Palau, like, starting out, the two tribes are equal, right? Like, it's not like one mm -hmm. tribe gets all these benefits versus the other tribe. I don't want to see a tribe be given absolutely nothing over the other ones starting the game. Like, it's... The whole point of Survivor, everyone gets equal opportunity at the start, big things, you know, the social dynamics, having one tribe get literally nothing, like, it became a chore to watch. Like, I want, I watch Survivor for the entertainment factor, you know, it's a good show to watch. This became like, okay, I have to sit down and watch this season. I didn't want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the haves versus the have-nots, like I said, it's a bad storytelling. And I think it becomes even worse with looking at the recruits versus uh, who applied for the show. Do yeah. you know the stats on how many recruits this season so had? It's wait, is Papa Bear in South Pacific or is that no? Th this one. This is Papa Smurf. He, Papa Smurf. That's what it was. Uh, I I I know that he's the only uh, uh person who applied. The rest of them are all, all recruits. I, and I believe Earl actually got recruited a day before they went out. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure the, the exact on that, but yeah, Earl got mm -hmm. recruited. All the people on this cast got recruited except for Papa Smurf, who Papa mm -hmm. Smurf ends up, you know, medically leaving or quitting, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, Earl plays a fantastic game here, which we'll dive into a little bit. But Earl had only seen one episode of Survivor before this, the premiere of Cook Islands, which is insane. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still that's able so to play weird. like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's completely insane. Well, it, it makes sense because Cook Islands. So literally. Oh, so wait. So they were like, oh, you want to Survivor? He's like, yeah, sure. And they're like, okay, go go watch this last episode that's going to air before we're going to fly out. And that just happened to be the Cook Islands premiere. That's crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> insane. And I think like those two things overall, like the haves versus have nots being awful storytelling me mechanic. And then the recruits versus the applying people to the show. Like, two, these are two major things that make the show awful. And I think it's kind of like a big overarching thing of like the, the post classic era of Survivor. This post classic era, obviously, being Survivor season 11, 9 to, to 11 season 14. To like 14. I yeah. think it's a, a 11 to 14. I, I think n 9 and 10 still kind of breathe classic. Um, and they're also just really good seasons. I think yeah. I think this like 11 to 14, especially at the time that it aired, like viewership really dropped after Palau. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah, 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 Palau, honestly. I think maybe Gu Gu Guatemala stayed the viewership just because Stephanie uh, was on, on the season. Everyone uh, loves Stephanie. But I think at, at, at 12, I mean, now everyone's like, oh, 12, so iconic. The, the, the final six is so iconic. But, like, at the time, 12 was not regarded as a good season. 
Uh, 13 was not regarded as a good season. And the only reason it, it's regarded now is because it has the big characters. 14 was definitely not, and it still is. And, and then 15 and 16 kind of brought it back. And then we obviously had our great stretch where, you know, 15 to 20 was a really good stretch. Yeah, I consider like 15 to 20 as like the golden age of Survivor. Mm -hmm. like you got those mm -hmm. top right seasons all the way through. But yeah, yeah. and the, 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 this post-classic yeah. era, where you, wherever you like cut the line, it really is this whole era is defined by change. And Survivor's just throwing anything they got at the wall and just seeing what sticks, which is never yep. a good idea. You never want to have that happen. Yeah. And I, not much sticks this season. So yeah, let's dive into it a little right, closer now. So, so, okay, so my second bullet is so, uh, no, sorry, my second bullet is current format idol how do we feel about so i'm guessing i, I know the answer but I'll, I'll ask you just to ask i'm guessing you you you, you like the current format the best i mean obviously yeah. out of all of them right okay I agree. I agree let's let's not have the super idol the terry P tyler per tyler perry idol mm -hmm. whatever you call it you know let's get that out of here um well, well, well the issue is that it never gets played because the threat of it is so bad like i'm sure nowadays if they put it in like season 41 they would flush it because they're like smart enough but in in the seasons it was in 12 and 13 the strategy just wasn't good enough for them to be able to oh like what if we do this crazy split where we like got the super idol out yeah. and then in season 28 tony had it and he bluffed with it so that's why it, 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 it was never you know split out or flushed out you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and so i feel like now if it came back it it would be a little bit more balanced because at least players are better now and they know how to do crazy splits and stuff like that. But at, at the time, it, it came out in both 12, 13, and then when it came back for 28, no, 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 no. I like the... the um, how, do, how do you feel 32. about the co-wrong? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I really like the 32 version of it. I don't like the, the 35, but it could work out because it, it, it never wanted to use or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I like the th the 32 version. It, it leads to you, you needing to have multiple facets of uh your game to, to 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 be able to use it so thoughts on the idol and then once the next bullet yeah the idol i mean it's way better obviously this is the format that survivor is going to take for the rest of the time for most of the time on the show that's what i mean but um yeah you talked about flushing the idol and you forget about in cook islands the legendary uh, cowboy yep. strategy cowboy yep. yeah he 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 would have been able to do it if not for yule but this is the better idol format i like it here um yeah let's let's move on to your next point next all right bullet. so my next bullet is sylvia having no chance i mean it doesn't matter what this woman does she gets um not picked for the boat right or for, for the tribes right yeah and then she she gets sent to is i think it's exile island which i mean i guess she has a chance for the idol but i mean it's, it's sylvia's gonna find it yeah right uh, and 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 so then what ends up happening is that sylvia has no chance because either tribe she goes to she, she she has no bonds. Everybody hates her at both at probably at both tribes if she comes back. And then to make it even worse, she goes to the worst camp. It's it's just I I feel bad for this. One. I feel bad. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> she was out of luck. Like that's one of the cases where survivor you got bad luck, bad bounce. Uh, yep. Try again yep. next year. Yep. How do you feel about having the the first time ever an odd number cast? I mean, obviously it's because uh, Melissa McNulty, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I I. I don't know. I mean, it's, I just I like I like even. I'm I'm I well, don't. It makes more I sense. I just don't need Sylvia having no chance. That that's 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 literally just a waste of a boot. And then the storytelling, they she not she not interesting enough for it, it to be interesting. Obviously, if like Rupert was the Sylvia of this uh, in this case, obviously would be super excited, you know. But it's it's it, no because you're yeah. you're taking way too much of a chance on you you getting a Sylvia out there, and no one no one cares about Sylvia on the Exile. So yeah, um, you, you have anything else or can I go? Yeah, yeah, that, you move All on. Right. Forgettable pre-jury boots is my next uh, next one. Why? Yeah. Why? I, I I don't understand. Like pre-jury, and I I, I uh, specifically said pre-jury because pre-merge. There's so Rocky and Lisi. Is it Lisi or Lisa? I think it's Lisi. Um, but let's yeah. just Rocky not talk about Lisi. Lisi. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky and Lisi are the only two people who are me 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 memorable from 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 the pre-merge, and they're pre and and they're on the jury. Which has kind of happened to end up good, where you 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 at least got um you're like two big uh, pre merge players to be on on the jury, and then but everyone else but before I guess Rocky is who starts it. Everyone else before Rocky is so forgettable. I would argue other like Anthony, but other yeah, than that, was, you're right? We'll we'll, we'll we'll get to Anthony in a second. We'll, we'll get to Anthony in a second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel bad um, for that guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, um, so, looking at this list here, like that's probably one of the highlights of Fiji. If you want to try and nitpick and find anything good about it, yeah. is the boot order is good. Like it's 
they yeah. recover there. Like, yep. what happens if the season's a final two? Earl doesn't make it to final trouble council, and we have a Cassandra like win. Cassandra dreams. Oh, yeah. God. That would be, that, be, so, be so bad. If, if, if Cassandra won this season, it would be the worst season of Sir. Because at least with Thailand, Brian Hyde ends up winning the best player of the season. Now, was the season kind of made for him? Yeah. Just like yeah. like probably near close to Rob's season um, that was made for him. Like, yeah, but at least the, the person who's supposed to won, win won. Mm-hmm. But with this season, if 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 Cassandra wins, oh my god, that's crazy. That, yeah, that's that's a rough rough bounce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's it called? So now we have Yao Man's idol because he finds it somewhere in, in between this and, and my next bullet. So let's talk about that. Hey, how do you feel about Yao Man finding the idol? I mean, obviously a, a fan favorite in this season. Yeah, awesome. fan favorite in the season, and when the season aired, I'm looking at this season run 2007. So this is yep. one of the first seasons I watched live. I was really oh. young at the time. Yeah really young at the time and i remember i love yao man like i don't really remember anything else about this season other than i was a huge yao man <laughs> fan um yeah. <laughs> everything else is pretty forgettable but yeah. yeah um we have in the earlier seasons we have people doing the fake idol kind of thing but it never gets aired never gets shown other than secret scenes yeah. and interviews but this is the first time the show decided to air someone making a fake idol how do you feel about that strategy yao man doing the fake idol kind of thing i mean it, it, so did they did they end or ever end up even getting found or no? I, I forget because the season is so forgettable. I don't think so. No, it okay. wasn't. <laughs> but I mean, it's just a good idea. It, it's a it's it it's very rare that ma- making a fake idol is just a dumb idea. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think yeah, I mean, I, Ozzy I, gets I, his inspiration and fans and favorites from Yaman doing it here. Yeah, man. Yep. So you're gonna want that to happen to have the stick moment and fans and favorites. So yep. I think it's a good I mean, thing to happen. I it's very rare that, that making a fake idol is stupid. The only times it is is for. If, if you're just doing it and you're, you're losing jury votes, <clears throat> Angelina, or <laughs> if you're just doing it and then you, you get caught doing it, which I don't think anyone's gotten caught making a fake idol and then it got found and then they're like, no, 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 this person made a fake idol, this and that. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's a r- really good strategy and it's kind of hard to, to knock the strategy. Mo- moving on to my next bullet, I got Anthony versus Rocky. This is our, this is our pre-merge duel. We got duels and got, you know, you got a little fish punching going on. Yeah, how do we feel about this? Um, yeah, looking back on it, like, our, one of the things I do remember watching this as a little kid, I was like, oh, Rocky's such a crazy character, what's this guy doing? Rewatching the season, that, that thought does not age well. Even though Rocky mm-hmm. does still have some, like, crazy moments, and he is good TV, I feel so bad for Anthony. So bad. Mm-hmm. He, he gets, this guy gets bullied out here, harassed. Um, and that's, yeah, it's not good TV to watch. I like Rocky, not because he's a good person, but because he's a bad person. That's the whole point. I mean, I think that's the sell with Rocky. Is like, you know, this guy, like, like he's not a nice person, and mm. he doesn't really have a filter, but he's unapologetically Rocky. Rocky will never, like, Rocky will never think Anthony's way, and Anthony will never think Rocky's way, and I think that that's why it works. Now, I wish they had both gotten to be on the jury, and they yeah. just kick Lisi off. That would be that would be fantastic. I mean. But um, but I feel like yeah I feel like I, I it works I mean obviously this saves like three episodes from being the worst stretch you know since Australian Outback post merge like you know what I mean yeah well Rocky kind of carries the pre merge of the season which he you, really does yeah, yeah like without Rocky what really are we talking about for the first half nothing I, really I I I remember uh, Peridium when he was doing his um his uh, mafioso character archetype the mm-hmm. first mop. Ma- mafioso post boston rob is rocky you know so it's like he he, he was like, like he did have control it's just like he didn't have anything else but control and then when the when the control goes away he doesn't have any bonds he's not a nice person he doesn't have any physical game it, it, it's it's rocky but that's why i like rocky i don't like people who are perfect people who you're like oh like i really like hearing that person like i, I like people who are different i like people who i like some people to be not be likable because then you have a too likable cast that's you know that can end up pretty bad. You know what I mean. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I like when certain people are like more, more like, what in the hell did I just listen to this person say? Like, but now obviously there's limits to stuff. There's obviously like I, I don't need to see outing going on on Survivor. <laughs> I don't need to see that. But like, I, 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 I like Rocky for who Rocky is. Uh, you know what I mean? As a character on the show, I like, I like Rocky as a character. On the show. Yeah, and I'm happy we get Rocky on the jury. I think that's a fun moment. Not fun moment, though, is our next boot after Rocky is uh, with Lisi. Um, so I have a few notes for Lisi. Probably the most notes out of any character oh, I have wow. here. Go, go for it. I, I have nothing on Lisi. Um, 
So first of all, her the bitterness she has towards the final three. She asks uh, Dreams how many zeros are in a million. She talks to, about Cassandra about her shoes. Like, wh- what is she doing here? <laughs> She's on the Haves tribe, so she's living in the best tribe in Survivor history, other than the final five or final six of Island of the Idols. The best tribe ever. Yep. And yet she still wants to quit the game multiple times. Yeah. She wants. Yeah. yeah. She wants it's to quit tough. the game multiple to- times. Doesn't want to be there. Um. I, the only good thing we get about for Lisi is the gif of her uh, falling over when running during the memory challenge, just <laughs> falling straight on her face. That's the wait. Isn't isn't that Michelle Yee who just flies off of the platform? No, it's Lisi. But Michelle Yee also like wiped. I out think the yeah. <laughs> yes. do, do you remember that? Like when like it's like the camera isn't focusing on her. It's like focusing on the person. <laughs> oh yeah, and, like, I do remember that. Like in the background, you just see like somebody like just die in the background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I remember that. Uh, okay, we're we gonna go to the next bullet. Yeah, let's do the next. <laughs> okay, so I have the twist of giving up camp versus tribal. H- how do we feel about this? I, if it. If 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 you're gonna do the season, I don't know it's flawed because like I like it because it, at least it adds something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's better than the bot- the bottle twist, which I, I think is super rigged. But yeah. I mean, this is like, of course they're gonna go to tribal. Like they have the best camp ever versus literally the worst camp in in Survivor history. Of yeah, course they're gonna go to tribal, so it's kind of obvious. It's kind of funny too because they hadn't gone to tribal council yet because uh, Papa Smurf ends up quitting. And he didn't doesn't yep. get voted out. So you don't know where the tribal lines are yet, though. So if someone's yep. choosing to go to tribal council, even though like something like they're going home, like I think that idea is crazy. And I w- would yep. you choose to keep your camp? Is that what you'd choose? Keep. I would. I would. I mean, it depends. <laughs> so wait, right? Did, like, did, did it did it have to be like a, a unanimous decision or what? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Huh. So what, what would happen if they didn't do it? You know, so do they draw rocks and whoever drew the rock and got to the side or what? That, that's a good. I'm reading the notes here. I'm not. I'm actually not sure on that. But uh, huh. L- Liliana gets go- going home here. I mean, it's fine. Yep. Obviously, they pick that. It's a good change up from uh, the have nots going home every single tribal council. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. We good? Let, let's talk a little bit about the four horsemen. Sure. Well, no. I mean, I I have some stuff before that. Oh yeah. Okay, keep going. So I have. Uh, how, 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 how do we feel about the early jury? How do we feel about that? The early jury. Um. Yeah. Like, do you like that? Do you not like that? Let's. I let's. Kind of like that. I I like it. Right, and it keeps uh, it's a theme survivor will continue doing for a long time now, and it's yep. a good way to keep more characters in the game longer. So, yep. like you know, in heroes versus villains, you get to keep coach on the on Coaching the jury, and right, board, and things yeah. like that. Yep. Survivor likes their characters and their big characters, and when you're getting these big characters, there's always a risk of, oh, they might be gone pre-merge, then boom, you're done, you lost them. So this is a way to keep keep, keep face them. and keep those popular people there longer. Uh, and you know, without that, we don't get Rocky, right? So Correct, correct. Do you? So I have my uh, next bullet is about uh, the, the, the post-merge split up. Do you want, want to talk about that first or the four, four horsemen first? Because I feel like if the four horsemen don't, don't go, go, go to the split up tribal council, at least not, not all of them. So I feel like we should. Yeah, some of them. Let, let's talk about this split. Um, split first. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, is it Michelle? Michelle Yee? Michelle Yee goes out, and then my next one is Michelle. Yeah, Michelle Yee. Uh, Rob Goddess, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's the trend. The Survivor community feels that way. Um, yeah, Michelle like, Yee for like, second chance too. It's like uh, let's make it Natalie happen. Bolton. She needs to come back, even though she said like three words the entire season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I think uh, people have talked more about Michelle Yee wanting to come back than Michelle Yee's talked about Survivor. So, um, <laughs> yeah, right. There's that yeah, right. too. Um, yeah. How do you like the idea here, though? As the first boot, boot I, I, at the I, merge, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I, I don't like it. Any boot, but the first boot is the worst because I, I, I want a merge boot. Jesus Christ! Like I don't want to. Yeah. Oh, the, the merge is merge. one of the highlights yeah. of the season. Like you're building up yeah. to this moment, and then you're, you're, you're teasing yeah. us, and you're like cutting it halfway. You're like, nope, we're not doing this. Like, 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 dude, just leave the merge and the vote after the merge alone. Because the merge and the vote after the merge are always, like, the two biggest votes. Of, uh, of, or, or at least the vote after the merge is always a really big vote. And and the merge vote can be a big vote, or it can be, like, a Elizabeth and, and David versus Goliath situation. But either way, the, the merge vote needs to stay because it's a merge. And the vote after the merge needs to stay because it's always, like, a really, really big vote. Um, And obviously it worked. I mean, the vote after the merge for this season was the Ed Gordo, the best boot 
arguably yeah. like the 11 to 14 stint in you know season sentence in survivor so you know what i mean so it's yeah uh, yeah i don't know but let, let, let's not skip ahead go ahead what were you saying yeah no i was just saying like it's a bad idea overall like everyone's sad about the yeah. boot i don't know if they were sad in the moment watching the season but i know afterwards yeah. we're all like oh like she should come back but the whole idea of the whole thing like we were saying the merge boot one of the best episodes of most seasons of survivor you need to have the merge like it's a build-up right the first half of the game the players are coming yeah. together and then you're choosing just to split them up again i think it just adds more confusion and it just comes back to the idea of the post-classic era of survivor is all about the change like yeah. they're throwing everything at a wall uh, let's see what happens guys no it's uh this didn't work and it, it works a little bit better in island of the idols and the other yeah. season they i can't remember what the other one is i think it's hhh or uh, ghost island no no it's not it's not H -H 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 and i you know what i, th I think it is ghost island you're right yeah, it goes down when they yeah. when they split, but it, it's way after the merge happens, so that works better. Yep, yep, yep. Um, are, are we good? Oh, uh, yep. four horsemen, four horsemen, and then I'll get to my next bullet. Yep, Alex, Mookie, uh, Dreams, and the Gardo. <laughs> the, the the best alliance of all time. This tops uh, the Black Widow Brigade. Tops. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it lasted for so long. Can we not wait? <laughs> yeah. On? Just can can, can we uh, re refrain from talking from talking about the Agu Aguero boot until after? So make, so make sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, good. The, the, well, that's the best boot, boot of the whole season. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm trying to build up to it. It's a really good boot. <laughs> yeah, so we we have the four horsemen here coming together. It's a, a cross-tribal alliance as well, and it kind of comes together at the the after the swap happens. Yep. We, and um, kind of like the big thing that throws these guys off is in this uh, vote that just happens with Michelle Yee and kind of what happens afterwards is Dream finds Dreams finds out that Mookie has the idol, but they didn't tell Dreams, they didn't trust him. So that's kind of what starts this whole revolution with the Syndicate Alliance. I don't know why mm -hmm. these alliances have names here. but Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, um, the Syndicate Alliance obviously being Earl, Yao Man, Boo, Cassandra, and Michelle goes home. But yeah, these four horsemen, give me your thoughts. I mean, yeah, yeah. These four horsemen, these four horsemen. I mean, they were having fun at Ponderosa, but I mean, that's my next quote. <laughs> but um, yeah, it is. Just, yeah, I don't know. These four horsemen are a little bit, a little bit uh, no, untrained, I'd say, untrained. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I move on to my next quote? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So next quote is Michelle Yee Ponderosa. Are you aware of the events that are taking place at the Fiji Ponderosa? I I don't. You are aware of oh, yeah. <laughs> so give, a, give me there, a... there there's a, there's a rumor and it's been confirmed by Rocky, uh, Mookie, and Alex that Michelle Yee was uh, how do I say having relations with several of the male uh, pe people on this jury several wow and it's been not not only confirmed by the, those men themselves by other but by um, other people on this jury including Stacy. Um, yeah, so <laughs> how do we feel about this? I mean, this is like, I don't know, this is, this is a little, this gets a little crazy. It's a little crazy. Um, I think it gives a new name <laughs> to the four horsemen. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, bro, I don't know, I don't know, but I don't know. I, I didn't know about that, wow. You really, um, really didn't know, yeah, no, I, I, I talked about it in my, um, in my, uh, conspiracy theory video on my channel. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, t it's a lot, yeah. Let's, let's move on to the next Yeah, one. okay. Um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm, my next bullet is just the egg, egg, egg water boost. Let's just start. I mean, first of all, Stacy, mm -hmm. Stacy, coming up with the first safe boat, safe boat in Survivor history, just right off the bat. And then we have Dreams rushing around. This is, this feels like, like a boat out of, like, Edge of Extinction. This literally feels like, this is what it feels like. It's yeah. like a complete switch the season goes from thailand to edge Extinction, and then it goes right back to, to thailand directly after imagine if this season could have kept this up the entire time mm -hmm. i don't know where mm -hmm. these players came from and where they left after this vote because mm -hmm. yeah no it was great dude and if, if yeah you if, go if this boot could, could have happened even three times more at least because like more cases is like a stretch of like five episodes that are really good and all the other episodes are meh but, but like that like yeah from like the hunter boot to like the Road to four flip boot that it's like five five episodes that are golden and that that's why you know mark cases is, is, is considered so good if this season could have just had like those four episodes like it just could have gone on for three more episodes this season could have been so good bro yeah um and we get one of the 
the best gifts of all time for Survivor as well. When you uh, get the first Eduardo uh, vote come come up, you have yeah. a gu- it's all cartoons here. You have a Eduardo's <laughs> face. It's like oh, like a big shock moment. And then I think it cuts to Alex as well being shook, Mookie as well. And then you just see Earl's face, just so happy, smiling and nodding up and down. That's a great Dude, moment. It's, it's so funny, bro. And they, like, well, they play the idol right, and they're like all like high fiving each other, being and the four horsemen. Oh, yeah. And then, and then it's like, and then it's like, uh, it turns around and it says, uh, Eduardo. And I, everyone's just shocked. <laughs> They're all just like, they immediately fill up with fear. Just absolute anxiety just fills their mind. It's hilarious. It's yeah. hilarious to watch. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's the the highlight. The major, po- other than Earl winning the game, probably in Yao Man moments, this boot is the only highlight of the I, season for me. No, no, for me it is it's the only highlight of the season. I mean, I guess Yao Man's like I is probably the most memorable thing from this season. Like I, I can remember Yao Man like doing you know doing like the thing with the camera like, with the idol, the turtle, turtle. Oh my god, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I feel like this is definitely the highlight of the season. Like just TV wise, definitely. Um, are we going to move on? Or are we, are we gonna... Yeah, let's let's move on. All right. Boo first spice check. Let's talk about that. I mean, I'm, I'm, listen, who's, who's got these spy checks going on? Listen, Tony 1.0. So, so you're telling me before Survivor Kagai on, Tony went back, watched Survivor Fiji, and replicated Boo's game. So, uh, I, I, I watched Tony's interview. He, he said that he, the, the only, only seasons that, that he saw before he started to, to, to apply were season seven because fair play. And then yep. season nineteen and twenty, because Russell, like oh. he, 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 he had said that he had only come back when like a player, coincidentally, like he was gonna play, came to the show, right? Yeah. Um. And so he definitely did not see this. <laughs> definitely not see this. <laughs> there, no, 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 Tony Blotch doesn't see. Yeah. Boo is definitely not not got that that level of clout. No, for, for sure. Yeah. No. We. That's all I got about Boo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. When we have the car incident, let's talk about that for a oh, bit. Well, hold on. I I, still have, I just have two. two yeah, yeah. You, that. You, Yao man, uh, correct, correct. I I I I don't play. How do you how do you feel about that? Another like again, like this is why Yao man was one of the high, was the highlight of the season for me. Other than that one boot episode, mm-hmm. Yao man's fun TV, but like he is also a, little, a sneaky little guy. Like he has some really mm-hmm. good moments, and he has a mind for the game too. Great great play here. And we haven't touched on it at all either. We'll get back to the playing the idol correctly. His relationship yep. with Earl is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It is. It is a lot of fun to watch. Like two people just bounce off each other. It's very pretty similar to, to Wendell and uh, to Wendell and Dom. Uh, it just yeah, it shows that people from different worlds can, can come together and do, with a common goal and they do really really cool things. And I mean, they did it for sure. You have any comments on that before I get to my next one? Yeah, it's... keep going. Okay. Uh, so I have re I have re hiding idols. The first time we're gonna see idols start to come back, back. Yeah. Like oh, like it's oh, we need to go look for the idol again. Like I, I'm I'm sure I I mean I, I wasn't even I was two years old when this came out. Um, but like the idea of of re hiding idols and like all of a sudden they were like okay we need to go find a new idol. That that must have been the most exhilarating feeling as a fan. Like oh my god. Like, more... like, like there's there's another one like it isn't just one the whole season like oh my god it's, a, it's like a whole treasure hunt again like you, that, that yeah. must have been pretty cool yeah and i <laughs> way different than what we have today with uh yeah. three idols an episode or whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have like uh one kelly Wentworth will not count per millisecond and then we go to the next one yeah no this is this is a little bit different but it, because it was so new i'm sure it was it was cool all right my my next bullet i have the the car deal the, the infamous car deal yeah. You, you really um, get on that. Yeah. So obviously, you know the car, the the curse of the car and survivor. Whoever uh, wins the car doesn't win the game. Yep. Um. In this, so tr- dreams f- before starting the season, I'm was homeless, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Before starting the season was, which is a whole other thing because he didn't know, know how to use the French press and he gets harassed by his tribe early on for not knowing how to do that. Like the yeah. guy's homeless. Like give him a little bit of help here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So the car deal, yeah, uh, Yao Man ends up winning this challenge, negotiates with Dreams, and it's such a weird negotiation because it's like, okay, if we make it to this point in the game and you win, like it, Yao Man timed the whole thing perfectly, and it's yeah, and it's kind of crazy how they were able to do that. And, it, and Yao Man kind of knew it was like, this is the one point of the game where I'm gonna need help, and yeah. that's kind of shows Yao Man's knowledge of the game, showing that. I'm gonna run out of room, and they're gonna want to vote me out here. So, dreams, you're you're a big threat. If you can, or you're a big physical guy. If you can win this challenge, 
let's make a trade. Obviously, we'll talk about the decision at, at the Final Four, but how do you like how this has played out here when the deal's make, actually happening? I mean, I think it gives the season something, because, I mean, th th this finale would have been god-awful if Yao <laughs> yes. does make this deal, and, and the finale... Wait, so the, uh, the, the finale is four, right? It's, it's four, four yeah. people, or is it five? Okay, so then it would be... It, it's, it's four. It's Yao, Earl, um, and then it's uh, Cassandra and Dreams are, are the four. So if Yao doesn't make this deal, Yao goes four, because... Earl probably flips on him if he has any common sense, or or he doesn't, and then Yao beats whatever and flyer it. But then he, even then, basically, if the if Yao doesn't make this deal, we have the most boring finale ever. We have Yao going out uh, three to one, and then we have Earl winning of uh, final immunity or dreams, where they where wh whoever wins t uh, takes Cassandra and, and and beats Cassandra. And if Dreams wins, then you get Earl getting a oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this season would be so bad if the the Budor went a uh, three to one vote against Yao, and then Dreams wins win, wins finally uh, takes a Cassandra work. Cassandra beats him. Oh my god! This oh, season would be, this, th season this would is be. the worst. Yeah, well, I already have it rated the worst season. It, it would just... I mean, but for for me, it it, <laughs> it, it, it would it would probably be like a good because I think for me, I, I have probably thirtieth, but for me, okay. it, it, it it would be like thirty ninth. Yeah, d definitely. If uh, if if Cassandra wins the season. So not uh, uh, behind Thailand just because Jesus Christ that season sucks. But you know, I, I feel like um, I feel like it's just yeah that this season could have gone a lot worse if it weren't for for Yao making making that deal and in, in, in the Eduardo boot as well. Um. So ultimately, after the car deal happens, Dreams wins that challenge. They go to Tribal Council. Do you think? Obviously, Dreams would have been voted out, right? If Yao Man gets um, immunity. Well. Hold on. So, okay, hold on. So, Yao Man, who, wait, who, who did Yao Man vote for? He, he voted for Dreams, right? Yeah. No, okay, so uh, he couldn't because he Dreams had for, the necklace. Yeah. And he, he didn't vote for Earl because Earl had a perfect game. So, did, so he, he voted, he voted, he voted for, for Cassandra. Cassandra. Uh, so, uh, Yao v v voted uh, Cassandra. Did Earl vote uh, Yao? Yeah. So, oh, okay. that would have been an interesting <laughs> final so three. It, so if so if Earl had voted Cassandra with Yao, then it wouldn't have matter. They would have just tied, yeah. and then Cassandra and Dreams vote Yao, obviously because Earl didn't get any votes. And then you have a, a Cassandra and Yao fire making where, where Yao wins, I'm guessing. And yeah, then you have a Yao, Yao Earl, and Dreams, which is probably the best final three where, where Earl still wins, but at least it's more interesting. It's yeah, storytelling perspective that's more fun. But yeah, yeah. no, Yao Man goes home here. I. I Earl just showing again how he's the best player yep. of the season. I think how he just not doesn't get voted for other than the one vote he, he gets. Beats, he beats everybody and and everybody takes him to the end, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, except for like the, the four horsemen, obviously. But as, as yeah. soon as it's out, everyone in the final six or five ish, they, they all take Earl to the end, which is which is fantastic. And yeah. he beats all of them. He beats the entire cast. Anyone from the pre-merge, anyone from the post, it doesn't matter. Which is really impressed by him. Which is also crazy. I uh, have my notes here. He voted correctly at every single tribal council he went to. That's uh. Can we talk about only, that? Yeah, I mean, I uh, guess I remember Tony saying his first uh, in uh, in post game interview uh, for Winners at War. He's like, "This is the first vote that I didn't know was going on is is the Ben vote in Winners at War, which is really impressive." Um, but I'm there. There's been votes where Tony didn't necessarily vote right, but he, he just didn't know what was going on. Um, yeah. or sorry, sorry, uh, other, other way around. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, Earl, Earl, Earl doing this way, way before Tony's even interested in in, in applying for survivors is re really, really cool. And it just shows that Earl, you know, is probably. I mean, he's definitely like a top three winner up up, up to this point in in, in, in survivors history, up, up to the point at his season year. I mean, I think I, we I, really get robbed here with uh, Earl yeah. not coming back for winners at war. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, it's Earl's own doing. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's not his own, it's not his own doing. But like, you know, it's it's Earl's own. Cir cir circumstances that that keep yeah. him from being on the season, but I think at, at the time that Earl's season aired, it's Richard Hatch, Tom, and and, and him for for do for the most dominant wins, honestly. And um, I mean, I think it's just really impressive. Yeah, and then throughout the entire season, he only has one vote casted against him, and it's from yep. Rita early on in the game. Who who's who the hell is Rita again? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> what is going on here? And Rita, Rita votes too. for Earl. I have the quote here. I voted for Earl because I know for sure you won't be voted out today. I can't vote for who we agreed on. I know you'll understand. So if this girl doesn't vote for Earl here, he has a perfect game. Perfect like, game, <laughs> and definitely a wait. So does JT have the, the perfect, the first perfect game, or is it? Yeah, it's it's JT then it's Cochran. I think JT probably 
plays a better game than Earl, just 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 because like literally people were giving up their games for JT, whereas no one was giving up their game for Earl. Yeah, but I I, I think it's close. I, I think though that that if, if if Earl can get this perfect game, he 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 um he rivals JT for the, the the most perfect game, honestly. Yeah, and like the fact that he loses this perfect game off of someone who's saying he, they voted for him because they know he's not going home, like that's yeah. such an asterisk there. Like really, yeah. I think we should we should count it, but. Mm -hmm. That, but, that's that what are your final thoughts numbers are the numbers yeah exactly. so just overall in the season I, I i think the season has uh individual decent episodes slash moments but there's never a consistent stretch i don't i don't eat like okay they were glad the entire season is just a complete stretch of amazing episodes uh a season like um um i'm trying to think of like a season that has like a really oh like uh, here's those villains a great pre-merge right so it's a stretch of pre-merge and then post not, not that good uh season like like um mark marquesis the the, the yeah. uh the, the uh stretch is e even shorter it's only like five episodes um but it's still good this season is like at the bottom of that tier where the, it's one episode it is it, it, your streak of good episodes literally one it's the ed guarabu and then the finale literally like that like you can't do that. Like, you can't do that and expect to have a good season. I think the season kind of suffered those consequences. Bring us out to, uh, to the end of this video, and then we'll we'll cut it off. Yeah. So, like like I told you guys, I give this season a 1.0 out of 10, F tier, the worst season of all time. And I think it just comes down to like the season not really doing that. We have the one good vote, but other than that, the season doesn't do anything right. Like, we have the haves versus have not storytelling. The haves versus have not tribe division, which is just awful storytelling. We don't want to have that. Recruits versus people applying for the show. We get one person to apply, and then Papa Smurf ends up leaving the game, not being voted out. So really, it's a season full of recruits, which again, the, the show kind of doesn't do that anymore. We want full super fans, tryhards. So <laughs> <laughs> again, like at the end of the day, this season do does things that in the full history of Survivor has shown not to work. Right, the recruits, we yep. don't want that. The has versus have nots, the only time they do it, it does not work here. We have Earl, best winner, one of the best winners, sorry, not the best winner. Yeah. One of the best winners of all time. And we have one good boot episode. So because of that, I think it's the worst season of all time. Survivor Spencer, where can we find you? We can find me in your in your description <laughs> right now. I my most popular videos is, is the cast assessment. So I, I or I've done an early cast assessment. Don't bully me in the comments. I know it's too early, but whatever. It's a fun cast assessment. Go watch it. I did it with our boy Snuffed over on his channel. I mean, I I, I just think I, your like Russell, your your uh, channel's growing. My channel's growing. Both both of us have re re really good good content on, on our channels, and you should check us both out. My final rating for Survivor Fiji is 1.0 out of 10. F tier in our lowest rated season.